Hi, Jason here. So yesterday, OpenAI did another massive big release, and this time it is for ChatGPT plugins. So this is going to be huge. Uh, it's it, AI is just moving so fast at the moment. You can barely catch your breath from one thing released to the next. Obviously, GPT-4 was only like within the last 10 days or so, and now, bang, they're, they're releasing plugins. And this really does put the power into ChatGPT and give it a whole load of new features. And perhaps one of the ones that's most interesting is its ability to then collect current data from the web. And this is what we've always been restricted to with ChatGPT is whatever data it has and up to that particular date, I think the first one was like September 2021. And then uh, the most recent GPT-4 is apparently up to September 22. So yeah, you know, being able to jump online and pull in data from the web is going to be absolutely amazing and have ChatGPT do stuff with it. But there is a whole load of things that they have announced, and I'm going to go through them in this video, so don't go anywhere. But one thing you might want to do if you want to be able to use ChatGPT plugins is, first of all, join the waitlist. It's right here, this link. I'm going to put a link to this page underneath the uh, video here because it wasn't particularly easy to find on their site, I have to say. Uh, so I've got the link, but just go and join the plugins waitlist. It looks like this. You basically just give them your major sort of details, whether you're willing or not to provide feedback, which I think is obviously we're going to put yes there because that's going to be beneficial to them. And then what plugins you want to try. And I'm going to show you the different plugins. There's two built-in plugins that ChatGPT have announced, they're like their own, and then there's third-party plugins. So that's what's happening. Now, if we just uh, roll on down here, these are some of the third-party plugins that you're going to be able to have from the off. Now, all of these are pretty cool. You know, you've got Expedia, which you can then link up to, and it can give you travel advice and goodness knows what else. Instacart enables you to, to order your grocery items. And of course, ChatGPT is brilliant at telling you about grocery items that you might need for cooking and things like that. Uh, kayak for flights, uh, hotels, rentals. But the big one out of all of these for me has got to be Zapier because Zapier can connect to 5,000 other apps, which means now all of those other apps can interact with ChatGPT. Can you imagine the possibilities of that? I mean, that is absolutely bonkers. And if we just um, pop over right now to Zapier's website, you can see they've announced it as well. Uh, you can now automate tasks directly within ChatGPT's interface. And they go on to sort of show you the plugin being used. And I'm going to show you a video in a second of, uh, of, of it working as well. But look at that. It's It's got, um, let me zoom in here for you so you can see the screenshot. Thanks. Can you look up Oshi is in the leads list? Okay, so it's wanting Zapier to go and check a leads list, which might be in uh, something like Google Sheets or something. Go and check it and come back. And then it said there that uh, basically that they couldn't find that lead. And then the person has just typed in, thanks, could you add her? And they've, and they've done that for you. So you've got so much more flexibility now. It's mind blowing uh, how much more flexibility that you've got. And obviously, uh, Zapier has not only 5,000 supported apps, but also 50,000 different actions that you can do. And you can see the screenshot there of what it looks like. Uh, when you're using ChatGPT. I understand this is only going to be available in the Plus version, and there is a waitlist for it, as I've shown you, for both developers who want to work with this and also uh, for people like us who just want to use it and, and get this power here. And there's this demo here is connecting it up to, um, if using Zapier, it's connecting up to Gmail as well. So you can like have it write emails and things like that for you. Just a crazy amount of use cases. Uh, like it says here, connecting to Slack as well, write and send automated emails and messages to update your team, search through a database and then, you know, respond with answers. It can even produce charts for goodness sake now. So uh, this has just gone completely and utterly wild. Now, let me just see if I can uh, go back to OpenAI here. Let me have a look. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
here's the here's one of the videos it shows you it's just a one minute example of how to use the plugin so let's just let's just put that there and i'll turn down the volume one of the other major ones that it's connecting with is this uh, Wolfram Alpha. Now, I have heard of Wolfram Alpha before, but it's basically um, a collection of very, very clever calculators, as far as I can understand. And uh, it is now available through ChatGPT Plus when we, we get approved by them. And so it really ups ChatGPT's ability to do complicated mathematical equations and doesn't require or rely on its own brain um, to sort of work out the distances between things. It can, it can put that information to Wolfram and say, like, how far away is Earth from Jupiter is one of the examples I believe in there. And it knows that because it's great at calculating everything. So really, really good. And then this demonstration here was just showing you how uh, it's working with Instacart as well to uh, take ingredients that you put in there and then it can go and order them from Instacart. So um, other things to note here, if we just scroll on down, this is one of the built in things, which is browsing. This is the, one of their built in plugins. And this, this is just going to be fantastic because uh, Bing and uh, Microsoft Bing has always had the capability, of course, to be able to connect to the web. And now ChatGPT Plus can too. Th the results that it gets, if we just play this a second here, the results that it gets are from uh, Microsoft uh, Bing, the search results, apparently. So I'm just going to zoom in here and let's just see what it's doing. So it's saying, how do this year's Oscar winners compare to recently released movies for box office sales? So now it's using the plugin, you can see browsing the web, and then it's searched for that search term, I guess, so it knows that um, you know, this year is 2023, so it's done a search for that. And then it's, t it's telling you what it's doing in the process. So it's clicked on the certain uh, first result, I would imagine that it came up to, reading through the content and then um, giving you its opinion on everything that it's read. And this is what we've been dying for in ChatGPT because we need live current information that's available. And now we have it or we will have it as soon as uh, they let us or approve us on that wait list. So this is really, really exciting news and opens up a huge amount of uh, possibilities. Now let's just scroll down and see what else we've got there. Um, here we go. It's talking about safety considerations as well. So if you own a website and you don't want ChatGPT to be able to go and pull information out of your website, you can actually block their IPs and you can stop it from being able to crawl your uh, website as well. And they've, they've provided it some information there. Look, there's their IP ranges so that you can do with it what you will if you're in control of your own server, that is, of course, and your own robots.txt. Uh, so that's that. And then the other built-in one they've got is the code interpreter. And it's experimental, uh, uses Python. And, and this, the ability of this to do things is just crazy. Uh, again, you know, it gives another demonstration there as well. It's starting to be able to produce amazing graphs. You can actually do that right now, by the way, but they look awful. They're kind of done with ASCII code and stuff. But look at look at this. You know, it's just creating such amazing uh, data now. Really, really, really good. But I think one of the most impressive things for me as a kind of web guy is its ability to, to do such amazing things with images. Like right in this demo here, if I zoom in uh, and so that you can see the prompt, there we go. So what, what it's done with this is, is basically upload an image. So you can upload an image into it. And now it, it's saying, can you make it smaller? So it shrunk the image, no problem, done. Then can you turn it to grayscale, done. So image manipulation now, you know, using this uh, Python is it, it, just incredible. And, and then it's also asked it to tint it in green color. What software is this going to take out? So many other software companies that do this sort of stuff. And if you can just do it in ChatGPT, it's, it's scary, really. Now that it's created this kind of brain, this mind, uh, you know, you can tax it and 
test it and use it for so many different things that it's, it's you sort of become reliant on it because it's this one source that can do so much. And I just see it causing problems for a lot of little startups that used to be able to sort of make this easy. And, and now it's pretty easy in chat GPT as well. So you can, and the last thing in that in that demo there um, was that it, it sort of finished up doing what we wanted with the image, but then you were able to also just download it just by asking it, can you give me a download link? Done. So really, really amazing. Um, really, really amazing. And then there's some, some other more complicated things there. Um, this is a retrieval plugin. Um, maybe just have a little watch of that one there. And then uh, third party plugins, which I've shown you as well. And it can sort of use all of the plugins that are available to it to give you back information that you have requested instead of just relying on its own mind. So absolutely, absolutely crazy. There's another demo there as well of the third party plugins. It talks about using uh, Wolfram Alpha. And uh, there it is. Once again, join that plugins list. And if you if you love ChatGPT or fascinated by it as I am, you might want to come and join in this community that um, I run because it's gone bonkers. There's 2.3 thousand of us now that are in ChatGPT users. And it's off of Facebook because we all know that Facebook is just a mess, really, for having communities and stuff. It's just really, really clean. And people are just reporting great prompts, brilliant videos to watch, um, everything to do with like chat GPT. These guys are all obsessed with it. And and if you want to keep up to date with what's going on, I, I promise you someone in here will probably announce it the second OpenAI uh, I announce anything at all. So come and join in. I think you'll really love it here. And as I say, it's just completely free and just so much fun to be a part of. A lot of good people. So that's it. That um, ends this video. Chat GPT plugins are coming um, for a few lucky people who are using Plus. And over time, I'm sure they'll roll it out just as they are GPT-4 as well. Thanks for watching, and I've no doubt I'll see you in another video very soon because something else crazy will happen within the next 24 hours, I'm sure.